I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data analytics and data engineering. This week, we're going to return to our data engineering playlist and we're going to talk about percentiles. Specifically, how to use percentile calculations in SQL Server. Now, most people, or a lot of people, like to do their percentile calculations once they have their raw data out and into their reporting tool like Power BI uh, or uh, Pandas or whatever it is that you're using. But often, uh, it can be much more efficient and it can be much easier to do your percentile calculations uh, right on the database server itself. If you like what you've been seeing on the channel, uh, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave your uh, questions in the comment section below. And I do try to get back to everybody who comments or has a question about what's uh, happening. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so the data set that I got for this example today uh, is from the World Bank Group and uh, it is their climate change data which is available as a, an Excel file uh, on their website and you can download that. I took the, the sheet and I uh, imported it into SQL Server uh, and uh, I'm using uh, the tables, uh, the table that I created from that for our example today. Now the sheet has all kinds of uh, measures on it from rainfall to, to uh, um, you know, the, the percentage of uh, square kilometers under five meters and things like that. And so uh, I chose three out of the many available ones and not everyone uh, reports on the same year. Uh, so I'm going to uh, uh, take specific columns and I'm gonna put together three of the climate change data um, measures and I'm going to put them together into uh, one uh, table or CTE um, and uh, that's going to give us something that we can run some percentile calculations on. And here we have our first one which uses this code here that I copied from the table and you can see that it is land area below five meters, percentage of land area and uh, each country uh, that reported is represented here and uh, as I scroll through the data here you can see different ones but you'll notice that uh, there are some that are not numbers uh, so we're gonna have to not report on those because those countries uh, do not report uh, and so uh, we'll go ahead and we'll filter those out um, so that we don't have any non-numbers uh, but since the, the field itself appears to be uh, text uh, that came into SQL Server, we're going we're gonna to throw a cast, I think, onto that uh, column, which is the column for the year 2000, and we'll cast that uh, as a float uh, for now, and that'll, that'll change it into a number that can be compared to other numbers. And we'll call our, our uh, new measure, we'll call it our measure, and that'll give us our four columns in our table here. So if we run that, we can see uh, we've got uh, all of the countries in there and uh, we've got all numbers in the right-hand column. And then uh, we're gonna take two more uh, measures um, and we're gonna have to use a union, I think, here because uh, the, uh, <clears throat> we don't have uh, data in some of the fields for, for the other measures. Um, and so this is one way you could do it. You could you could select this different ways, but I'm just going to use a simple union query here, and uh, we'll cast the year 2011, which was reported for this next measure, and uh, uh, that is going to um, give us uh, there we go average annual precipitation, uh, which is uh, from 1961 to 1990. And now we have two measures for each country, and uh, that's going to give us uh, um, <clears throat> some, some nice comparison. Moving on, uh, we'll copy that once again, and we'll uh, choose the third uh, measure that I, that I chose, and so we'll paste that in. And that measure is uh, population uh, for each country, and we only had 
at least in this uh, workbook, there was only data from 2010, uh, which is fine for our example. Um, and uh, so now if we run that one, we've got population, average annual precipitation, and land area. And we've got it for uh, most of the countries. Countries that didn't report on one or the other, that's fine because they, uh, they just won't show in the list for one measure if they didn't report for a particular year. And then, uh, and then we'll take that and we'll, we'll put that into uh, common table expression and uh, CTE as it's called and we'll, we'll uh, make that into a table that we can use uh, for another query. Um, and in the next query, uh, I'll go ahead and start the process of uh, getting our percentile calculations that we can use. Uh, for our different measures here. And so what I'm going to do is uh, I'll select the country name. Um, I don't think I'll um, select the code. I'll just get the series name and then I'll get our measure that we uh, have created from our different data. And uh, that's going to give us um, a nice table that we can, we can use and then we can add another column to it. So what I want to do, uh, our goal here today is to split, uh, to show where each country sits in terms of thirds. So in terms of each measure, are they in the upper third, the middle third, or lower third uh, of, of the percentile measurement. And so what we can do is uh, we're going to use the percentile underscore uh, CONT, which is for continuous, and that's going to give us um, a measure even if we don't have a matching uh, value in our list. So uh, what it allows us to do is to match it according to uh, a continuous curve as opposed to um, a discrete one. So if you want to use discrete, you can use discrete. Uh, it is the underscore DISC and that one is a different, uh, handles it a little bit differently. I prefer to use the continuous one for most purposes. Uh, and this is what we're using here. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, get the percentile uh, within the group. We're going to order by the measure uh, and then we're going to partition so that the uh, measure is uh, sorted according to its groups. And we'll return a 1 uh, if it is above the 0.667 uh, using the percentile uh, underscore CONT and uh, that's going to put it into the first group when compared to all of the other uh, measures in that group. And uh, we'll use the same thing uh, for the second uh, percentile group, which will be uh, 0.334 if it's above that. And it, it'll fall into the last group, which is uh, 3 uh, if it hasn't satisfied either of those conditions. And so what we're going to use is uh, we'll finish this one uh, with our partition over and then we'll do an else and that will uh, take us to the end of that field definition and that'll allow us to go ahead and uh, run this procedure or run this query just to uh, see uh, what we'll get uh, for our results. And we'll call this uh, field, we'll call it uh, partition group, I guess. That'll be easy to understand. If we had, if we had three um, uh, percentile uh, calculations in there, it would actually be quartiles, uh, which is uh, used for other purposes. But for today's case, I'm just going to uh, use the uh, upper, middle, and lower thirds. So there we go, we've got that. Oh, I see. An, mistake already in the query. Um, this is uh, not what I'm expecting, so let's take a look. It looks like the uh, I haven't done my partition by correctly. I should be using my category for that. So we'll go ahead and change that. Uh, we'll go up and uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to order this uh, in such a way that uh, it actually makes sense. Uh, I think the first way that I'll do it is by order it. I'll order it by series uh, name and then and then by uh, by measure, so that we can actually get a sense of what the data looks like in sort of sending order. 
And uh, the other the mistake that I saw there is uh, the partition by needs to be your uh, category variable. So we'll we'll uh, uh, put our category variable in there. We could use the series code or the series name because they're both sort of uh, uh, the same. Uh, but I'm going to use series code here. So and that's going to uh, do our our partition by properly, and and. Uh, and then we can see what we get from that. So there we go. Uh, so in this sense, uh, we've got it sorted by each of the measures. You can see there's the first, second, uh, and third, um, uh, first, second, and third uh, percentile groups. And uh, that's going to allow us to uh, move forward. And we can uh, use this query. Uh, to you know, query individual countries to get all three measures and things like that. So we'll take a look at that now. So now that we have our nice uh, table of all of our measures, um, I'm going to go ahead and put the second query into a CTE as well, uh, just for demonstra demonstration purposes. So we'll call this one uh, Q percent, and uh, and that'll allow me to uh, query from that. A data set. We'll take the order by out because, and that'll give us a nice result set to select from. Uh, say if we wanted to look at individual countries and check the the measures for them and see where they fall in their uh, upper, middle, and lower thirds. So we could say select star from uh, our query where uh, country name is Netherlands, and as you can see. As we expect, Netherlands would be in the first percentile group for uh, land area below five meters, and uh, uh, second group for the precipitation. Uh, and if we looked at Canada, you can see that they're in the second uh, percentile group for land area, and they're in the top for population, and uh, in the third group for annual uh, precipitation. And uh, if we took a look at, say, Belgium, for example, uh, again, we could get the same measures. And so make sure you also check out uh, percentile underscore DISC and percentile underscore rank, which are also useful for this purpose in SQL Server. And that is how you do percentiles in SQL Server. I hope you enjoyed our discussion today about using percentile calculations in SQL Server. And if you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And uh, if you have any questions or comments about what you saw today, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. Have a great day. Have a safe day. I'll catch you next time.